Having fun and feeling free All the good times that we share Keep coming back to me Don't relax just yet. You've just been bitten by the wolf. Are you afraid? Prepare to travel at the speed of fright. <laughs> In 1981, Kings Island opened the bat, wrongly billed as the world's first flying coaster. It built on the work of previous rides from Long Beach and, fittingly, Oktoberfest, but refused to learn from their mistakes. I don't know how many times I'll have to tell professional ride designers this, but if you don't bank your turns, you will break them. We've known this since day one. The bat's designers wrongly assumed that the force on the track came from the car, and because the car swung, the track wouldn't need banking to account for the force. But where do you think that force goes? Pendulums aren't magic. So Kings Island found out that bail for breaking the law of conservation of momentum is really pricey and decided to close the ride rather than fix it. But the good folks at Arrow were already working on a sequel because apparently someone at Bush Gardens raised their hand in a meeting and said, uh, hey, people seem to love this ride system. What if we did that, but with physics? And so the Big Bad Wolf was released. It stood just inside the Oktoberfest section of Busch Gardens Williamsburg so that all who entered the land saw its sign. The mascot was perfect, as the use of a fairy tale character communicated that this was a family coaster. Yet the choice of a villainous, vicious animal indicated that this was no kitty ride. And I think one of the reasons there's so much lingering love for this coaster is it was a lot of people's first big kid ride, and a pretty thrilling one at that. The new attraction served to try and draw people to the back of the park and follow the point of view of a wolf rampaging through Germany's Black Forest. For anyone who doesn't know, the Black Forest is the real-life setting for many traditional German fairy tales slash horror stories whose moral is, do not under any circumstances go in the forest. Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, basically any bedtime story where a kid died in the woods, these are those woods. The forests of Virginia made a perfectly good substitute, and Bush Gardens made excellent use of them. Unlike previous flying coasters that went with more aerial themes, Busch Gardens chose a land animal and kept their cars close to the ground. This allowed riders to skim the leaf-covered landscape and narrowly avoid obstacles such as trees and a model Bavarian village. This transformed the family coaster and made for a much more thrilling experience than its basic mechanics would indicate. It used the serpentine track to build up serious swing action and focused much more on side-to-side -side motion than up and down, which is kind of unusual in ride design, and really replicated the movements of a frantic animal. Every time, you felt like this was the time the wolf would ram headfirst into a tree. And all of this was only intensified on night rides. The narrow misses were thrilling enough when you could see them in advance. The coaster thoroughly terrified first-time riders, once again thanks to the topographical integration. On the bridge to the Oktoberfest section of the park, the main drop was visible. And that was it. A section of the Bavarian village was also in view of Drakenfire's queue, but everything else was shrouded in shrubbery. So most riders were completely caught off guard when they were suddenly whizzing by a small German town, which also camouflaged their support structure. This 
was some debate as to rewritability once you knew what was coming, but either way, the element of surprise is a powerful and often neglected tool of coaster design. Because riders were kept in the dark about the ride layout and the terrain rose gradually, they were often shocked to suddenly be about to go over an 80-foot drop, the only part of the ride they knew was coming. It was an expert use of the landscape, which more parks should do. It can really enhance ride experience, and I'm sure it's one of the reasons this ride is as beloved as it is. Take the exact same thing and put it on a concrete slab a la Cedar Fair, and it's satisfactory at best. Aero was known for creating iconic rides, and this was one of their last projects to measure up to that reputation. When its closure was announced, fans were justifiably disappointed. This was only heightened by the lack of a clear reason as to why. The official line was that it had just hit the end of its service life, and after 25 years, that may reasonably be true. There's speculation that a few high-profile accidents were the real reason, but if that were true, it probably would have been closed closer to the incidents. The truth is just somehow less satisfying. The park was revitalizing the Oktoberfest area, and they needed a new blockbuster ride to round it out. And they got one. Strange things happen in the Black Forest. Where things aren't always what they seem. Because thrills hide in the shadows. Just waiting at every turn. For Bolton, the new multi-launch coaster coming to Bush Gardens. Brave the Black Forest. But Bolton is, first of all, the best named coaster. Second of all, it's a quality multi-launcher that uses those launches to their full potential. It also uses the rise of terrain, like the notorious BBW, and even kept the iconic drop. But the surrounding forest doesn't factor in quite as prominently, partially because there's a significant indoor section. I can't make myself be mad about that though because of how amazing the indoor section is. It features the only example of a certain element in the United States, but I won't spoil it for you because the best way to experience it is cold. The first time I rode it, I didn't even know this element was an option that existed. My mental journey when it hit was honestly hysterical, but nobody wants to hear about that, and I refuse to ruin it for you. Suffice it to say that this guy's face perfectly captures the moment. I am sad that I missed out on riding a flying coaster, but would I trade it for a Bolton? Probably not. Change is terrifying, but we are coaster enthusiasts. Terror is our oxygen. This is a ride that may have been gone before its time, and I understand being sad about that. And I know it's going to be tempting to spoil for Bolton for everyone if you've ridden it, or for yourself if you haven't, but I'd ask you to refrain. Big Bad Wolf taught us anything, it's that surprise is powerful, and I guarantee you'll have a better experience if you're not expecting it. It's what he would have wanted. Thanks for watching.